have here uh, Brandon Morales, Brian Blackburn, Brian George. Hey, Brian, how you doing, buddy? Um, Brian Golinger, Chelsea White, Cheryl Egzy, Christian, there you are. And we have Colburn, McWhirter, Courtney Dewberry, Dana Sanders, Dave Lawrence, Don Reynolds, Donna Gabler, Erica Neville, Neville uh, George Paul, Jamie Bergeron. Well, they're piling in fast, and I come up with Jennifer Corlock, Jessica Joe Oliveira, Jesse Allison. All right, too many here. All right, welcome everyone. Let me see if uh, Vincent Derry is okay. Vincent. Hey, do you hear me okay? <laughs> I I can hear you. I don't see you yet. Um, I'm not too sure how to do this from um. Now let's see here. To I think you have to. This. Okay, I promoted you. To, uh, there there you are. <laughs> How are you? Man, I'm doing bad now that I was able to get on here. Man, I was worried for a second, Phil. Yeah, you and a bunch of others. We're going to wait a, just a couple of minutes because we had a, little, a few challenges opening up the room. We uh, opened up, a, a created actually a new one today to uh, make sure we have enough room for anyone you invited as well as our team. And That's uh, amazing. Quite a few on here. I really so, appreciate it. Yeah, man. Okay. Let me just do this. All right. You know what? We're going to get, uh, we're going to get rolling. So I think I, um, let me close out of here. So first of all, Hey Vincent, there's, there's my home on the fourth hole of the Charleston national country club. You got to come see me. Okay. <laughs> That's beautiful. I was, <laughs> I'll be there. With bells and whistles on, I'm just waiting for an invite, Phil, but I'll be there. All right, you got one. You've got one. All right, so this is the fourth fairway of the Charleston National Country Club. And out, up, here, up here in the observatory, looking out into the sound, which leads out into the ocean. So life is good. All right, um, uh, folks, first I want to uh, tell you how this whole meeting came about. Slideshow. Nothing like having your name in lights, huh, Vincent? Check it out. <laughs> That's pretty. Uh, uh, um, we were at the airport, I forget which one it was, and, and you and, and I and, and uh, uh, Dr. Uh, McCullough were sitting at the bar. None of us were drinking, the typical of the Melaleuca culture, and you and I got to talking, and um, I told you that between Dr. McCullough and myself, we had a total of 58 years, and you said, oh, man, you know, I just feel like I'm at the right place. I feel like I'm home. And we started talking uh, business and uh, talking about uh, how we built ours. And then you started telling me how you built yours. And I was just blown away. Uh, me being a baby boomer, I, I like to feel like I'm pretty good at the, the basics, you know, walking and talking, conversation, relationships. And that's the way we built it. And then I see you guys, you know, a whole new breed coming in and just blowing it out of uh, uh, online and so uh, you the amazing thing about you Vincent is that you offered to do this for us and you said well how much are you doing to Facebook I, you know some of our team does uh, I, I do very very little Christian put me on there because he thought I should be on there <laughs> but as far as marketing or you know prospecting no I just haven't done much of that at all so that's when you offered to uh, to share with us which really blew me away Vincent I mean you haven't been with the company long enough to to know that I mean that's the culture open book open door and I didn't know that you even knew that and so you offered and I said absolutely our team would love to get to know you would love to hear from you and so I'm not going to take much more time but I do want to uh, introduce you quickly so Vincent sent me this information today. He worked as an electrician and the supervisor at BNSF Railroad. He was introduced to an MLM opportunity. I guess that's what lured him out away from his job. Became very successful with that company. After three years, he left for what he described as personal, professional uh, reasons. Then he enrolled in Melaleuca in 2017 after looking at 30 other companies. And Vincent, I imagine you're going to uh, talk about that. Oh, he yeah. quickly earned the status of senior director in six months. That's fast. 
You know, look at Turner's, that is fast. He is now an executive director for, and he accomplished that mainly working from home. So we can't wait to hear what you have to say from Warner Robins, Georgia. I wish you could hear the applause, but <laughs> welcome Vince, take it away, it's all uh, yours. Phil, I appreciate the introduction. Um, yeah, like Phil said, I mean, you know, I came from um, another company, right? Um, but with coming from another company, you guys, um, we don't have, we didn't have what Mel Luca has, the leadership, the support, the corporate team, um, the culture. I felt like when I left my previous company, I felt like I was leaving junior high and I came straight to college with Mel Luca. That's how I felt. You know, when I saw the people and I saw the, the, everything, there's no, you go to an event and there's no groupies. You know, everybody makes you feel welcome. And uh, that was more meant more to me than anything. But mainly, you guys, um, with these other companies, you can't see transparency. You can't see back office reports. You can't see retention. Mel Luca was the only one in 30 companies that could show me everything I needed to see in order to be fully confident coming to this company and putting my blood, sweat, and tears in once again. Because let's face it, if we've been in another company, it is hard to start over. It's difficult. And I said, I want to be somewhere where I could build it one time and it's going to last a lifetime. That's why I was in looking for these other companies. I, I looked for three months, you guys. And I couldn't find anything that was any different from the previous company I just left until Mel Luca came my way. And I'm going to be honest with you, Phil, I said, I want nothing to do with bath soap when they offered it to me. That's what I said. I said, you can forget it. We've heard that before. But, but what I couldn't deny is, I thought, man, everybody and their mother shops at Walmart. Everybody brushes their teeth, does their laundry, does their dishes. I said, if I could just show people a better way to shop, and 100% of people shop, right? If I could just share and show people a better way to shop, this makes sense. I don't have to sell uh, uh, something like a skincare product alone or a health and wellness product alone. We have over 500 products and everybody needs these products. Once I grasped that, you guys went all in. I haven't looked back since. Um, I wanted to talk about things that, you know, what are effective, what are not effective, what works and doesn't work. You know, what are some do's and don'ts, right? And I would say, you know, if uh, one of the things is if we are looking to build on social media, and let me tell you guys something. These guys right here, building belly to belly and doing it, I'm going to tell you right now, you never want to take that away. There are different ways of working your business, okay? Um, different outlets. Social media is an outlet. Working in person is an outlet. And I don't want to take away from working in person at all because I work in person every chance that I get. Because you do not know when the next time social media can shut down. You don't know what can happen with Instagram or Facebook. They can, it can go out for, for days at a time. We don't know that. So working in person and building those, those contacts face to face is very important. Okay. But specifically when, um, uh, effective and not effective. Okay. Um, posting without call to action is effective on social media. I got, I had people, Phil, I, I signed up right over here. They said, well, Vincent, I can't post like I did with my old company. I, 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 I got my hands tied at Mel Luca. And I said, it's okay. <laughs> because, and, 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 and this goes back, um, when I started with my previous company, back in the days, social media platforms didn't care how many times you posted. They don't care, they didn't care what you said in post. And Facebook would push your content out to all your friends no matter what. How many times you posted a day didn't matter. What you said, it didn't matter. But over the years, the Facebook al algorithm has changed significantly, okay? Facebook now recognizes keywords. Any words that fa Facebook recognizes that look like you're selling something or it looks like an opportunity, they don't push those posts out as much to your audience because Facebook is wanting you to pay for advertising, mm, okay. if that makes sense. So 
Wait, they're catching on, Phil. They're catching on to these keywords. They're, they're seeing that. Facebook is smart, right? When you're posting on social media, you want to have three words in mind. So you want to write this down. Educating, empowering, and entertaining. If you can do these three things on social media, that is what's going to draw the audience to you. People join people, and I'll, I'll get more into detail on this in a, in a bit, but these are what your post should consist of. That is what people want to see. Um, I have an example, Phil. So I don't know if you can share uh, or if I can share. Um, I, was, I had a post on December 7th, December 7th on Facebook. And I kind of want to use that as a quick example of reference, if I could, if you don't mind. Yeah, I want to see if I can uh, switch over to you. Let me see if I can find that. Um, there we go. You've got, you've got the mouse control now. Okay, let me get on Facebook. Hop on here. Let me share screen here. Um, By the way, I love your posts on Facebook. I appreciate it. Yeah, <laughs> man, you. You, look, you look really good in there. Thank you. I, it's not let give me a button to share. Um, yeah, your mouse is moving, so let me uh, close out of mine. Oh. Uh, Try it now. No. Um, if you guys go to, and I can just tell them what it looked like from here. It's okay. So you can gain access back. No worries. Okay. But let me share. But if you go, guys, go to my Facebook profile. On December 7th, um, I did a post. And I had a bunch of cleaning products. And a picture of the cleaning products, it said from this to this. And the picture showed our cleaning products in comparison from Tide, Clorox, bleach, stuff like that. And in a question I asked, First thing in the post I asked, have you ever considered cleaning your home dangerous? Told them about, about the 20 year lung study and how if you're using, using national brand cleaners, it's as damaging to your lung capacity as smoking a pack of cigarettes. What am I doing there? So I'm educating my right. audience. Right. And at the end I said, did I also mention that these products are more affordable than big box stores? Here's what I didn't add in to this post. Okay. I didn't say anything like, um, you know, if you message me today, you're going to get 30 to 50% off by being a preferred shopper. I only have a few spots left for this online shopping club. Join us today for a dollar. I would have gotten one like and zero comments if I had any of that in there. So with, 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 with how Mel and Luca, their social media policies and procedures, it's interesting that we can't po post call to action, but it actually helps our post. I think we, we, we get in the habit of, of, of doing certain things in the past, and then we come to a company, we feel like our hands are tied. This is actually helping us, you guys. If I did this post any other way and I had any call to action, what would have happened was that we got no engagement and everybody would have ran because nobody likes a salesperson or we'll just say a used car salesperson, and I, this is no offense to any car salespeople here. What I mean is being attacked and just kind of, just always spamming your, the community. Now look at social media policies are strict and I love them because it allows us to draw people to us by educating, entertaining, and empowering people instead of selling people. If that makes sense. Absolutely. Um, so, if we educate people and share, we get good results. So if you look at that post, I got something like, I don't know, 40 likes and 20 comments and I actually signed someone in a private, took it to a private message. And they inquired about where I got these products from. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're doing. We're drawing people to us. We're adding value to our community. I'm gonna to touch base on that here in a minute. Um, another thing I would say is not sending out spammy scripts to your prospects. And one of my leaders, Jesse, she teaches this to her team, and I couldn't agree more. And that is to speak human. That is to be human, right? 
What does that look like? I like to give examples. For example, if, if I'm going to send out a business approach to a friend via Facebook or a text, we'll say, okay? I need to speak to them in a way that I always have since I've known them. Any other way would be foreign to them. An example of that looks like this. So let's say, um, let's say we're going to get somebody's attention, right? Okay. And, and we want to reach out. A template for this would be something like, hi, first name. I've got some exciting news. We definitely need to chat. When can we catch up for 10 to 15 minutes? Okay. But if I'm reaching out to John and John isn't used to me addressing him in this manner, he's going to think someone, <laughs> he's going to think someone took my phone and probably thinks it's a virus. So, so Vince, if I say a blank, if I could show you a way, or you could, no, right? Right. Okay. If, if, John, if John and I are friends and I call him Johnny Boy, let's just say I, I address John as Johnny Boy. I'm going to use this template. I'm going to use this as a template that I edit, and I'm going to speak human to him. I'm going to say, instead of saying, hi, first name, I'm going to say, what's up, Johnny boy? Mm -hmm. Hey, I've got some great news. We definitely need to catch up. When do you have about 10 to 15 minutes? That's how I've always spoke to Johnny, so Johnny's going to relate to that, and Johnny's going to want to catch up. If I send that script verbatim, John is not going to message me back because it is foreign to him and it doesn't make sense to him. It sounds, it, 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 it doesn't sound like it's from you. And I think that's a, a big, big uh, deal here. We have to speak human to our audience. So um, if you're going to use Facebook Messenger, if you're going to use a text, you want to personalize it more. I like to use the voice recorder button when I reach out to my prospects or my friends. Why? Because I'm not a robot. Then they really know it's not scripted. Then they really know that. So if I speak into the voice messenger and I, and I reach out to them, they're going to hear my voice. I'm not a robot. And that makes a huge difference as well. So start using the voice feature. And if, if you're uncomfortable doing that, get on the voice recorder with Bill and start sending him um, a voice... <laughs> With the voice tests or voice messages and practice with Bill until it feels natural. Okay? Yeah, I, like, I like those, Vince, when you send them to me. That's yeah. I like and it's a way, it, once you do it enough, once you do it enough, you, you break free of that fear. It just takes doing it enough times. I had fear when I first started doing that and reaching out. I had that fear. Um, so, um, Another thing is, if you're adding friends, right, we're, we're, we're building our network of people, okay? If we're adding friends, um, we're talking to people who would see the value in our product and business opportunity, we're looking for people who are, um, we, look, we look for people who, um, oh, that's where I'm looking for, quality. And in no way by any means is I'm, Am I saying to prejudge anyone? But if we're looking for people who see the value in our products and business, we are looking for quality shoppers and quality builders. Um, and like I said, don't prejudge anyone. I'm not saying to prejudge. I talk to anyone and everyone I can about Maluka. If you are breathing, I am talking to you about <laughs> I'm sharing our opportunity or I'm sharing our product. However, when I am out looking for potential builders, if I'm looking for potential shoppers, I'm looking for quality builders and shoppers. If I sign 20 shoppers, but they all cancel next month, then it really did me no good because we are looking for long-term shoppers here. Now look, it's a 96% reorder rate. 96 out of every 100 shoppers that shop this month are going to shop next month because we, we are finding quality shoppers. Um, and this makes me think of uh, a, a, a a quick story about my previous company. I enrolled 400 people in three months. In my oh previous my goodness. Company. How did you do that? I went crazy. Phil, I was ignorance on fire. I went crazy. I was working 80 to 100 hours a week at the railroad. And I wanted out. I was tired. I did that for 10 years straight. I missed all Christmas and Thanksgiving. 
birthdays, everything. I lived at work. And um, I made a lot of, of poor choices in my 20s. And it carried me into my 30s. It, it carried debt into my 30s. And I was living at work to pay off debt. I signed up 400 people. And I had some builders, some serious builders. But I also had a lot of fallout. I had a lot of people falling out. I was just, I, I literally talked to people. I talked them into signing with me. I was convincing people to join me. I was bugging them until they said yes. They didn't last too long, you guys. Okay? And what I've learned from that experience is quality alone doesn't equal success. Quantity plus quality equals success. And so I had to switch gears, right? Um, and, and, and that's what we're looking for. And, and, and so uh, an example, so you have a friends list, you guys. You guys are on, you're on Facebook. You have a friends list. Connect with them, you know, go to their Facebook pages, see what their storefront looks like. What does their storefront look like? What, what does their Facebook profile look like? Um, are they putting out good content? Are they adding value to the community? Um, are they someone you can relate to? Are they like-minded? Are they family oriented? Or do they show pictures where they enjoy being with people and, and the surroundings is a positive environment. Go to their Facebook, oh, like and comment under their post. When you like someone's uh, post on Facebook, that's pretty much like giving them a high five. When you comment, that's like giving them another high five. So and what happens when you're doing this, you guys, when you see you guys are on Facebook and you're scrolling, get out of the habit of scrolling and start doing some um, activity, mm -hmm. right? Engage. When you engage with your friends list, Facebook recognizes that as, and says, hey, these people have a relationship. And then the next time you post, Facebook pushes that post out to those people in their newsfeed because you're engaging with them. If you aren't connecting with the people on Facebook, Facebook won't push out your post to your Facebook friends. So if you have 3,000 friends on Facebook and you notice you're not getting much, many likes or comments, start engaging more with your friends. Get on their timeline. Take 20, 30 minutes a day and, and like and comment under all the, the news feeds. Just go. Just do that. Get in the habit of doing that, right? And paying it forward, yep. Um, Facebook suggests friends. Also, I don't know if you, you you guys see that, but there's a Facebook suggests certain friends. And here's the cool part, you guys. You can go take a look at their profile. You can go look at their storefront before you add them. Um, I find more often than not, I'm able to see that um, before I add them. So I'm going to find a post just like, like I would if they were my friend. I'm going to like it. I'm going to comment under the post, and then I'm going to send them a private message before I add them as a friend. I'm going to say, hey, listen, I love your page. I really like this, this, and that. Everybody loves a compliment. And then I want to end it with a question. Would you at all mind if, 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 if we connected um, on another time? Or would you mind if I added you as a friend? I need more people like you in my life. I would like to connect with more people like you in my life. This is just an example. It's a nice way of putting it. Well, I, I, I've never not opened a conversation after giving someone a genuine compliment, Phil. A genuine compliment always opens up a conversation. It's always positive, it makes someone's day. I like to find things about people that the average person wouldn't take the time to recognize, and I like to compliment on that. It's called a sincere compliment, right? Right, and well, people, well. people know if you're sincere or not, right? Um, so before I add anyone on Facebook, I look at their storefront, if I'm looking for a potential shopper, you know, someone who I could potentially approach about our health and wellness products, I'm going to find someone who posts a lot about clean eating, working out. Maybe they post about how much they spend at the store. I don't know. I'm looking for people who, who do shop at these stores, right? I'm looking for people who do, who, who like to put out this type of content because 
when the time is right and I connect with them and I ask them if they're open, they're going to be open. We have 500 non-toxic, eco-friendly, safer for your home products. Why would they not mm-hmm. want to be a part of that? Yeah. Right? I always like the question, are you open? Because if they say no, they're saying they're closed-minded in, in general. Right. That's <laughs> exactly. So that's why I like to look at their storefront first. And, and you might be saying, well, Vincent, how do I find people like that? Well, there's a wonderful thing called the search bar on Facebook. And you can type in any keyword that you want, and it's going to po- pull up posts or group pages in relation to that that you can either add yourself to or what your favorite uh, po- uh, search words. Um, I, I like to, I, you know, when I'm looking for uh, potential customers, health and wellness, um, online shopping, shopping, um, specific things like. Uh, uh, toxic free, um, certain keywords, working out, um, gym, um, fitness, lifestyle, just keywords of what you're kind of looking for. If it's a potential business builder, what am I looking for? Inspiration, mm-hmm. encouragement, um, entrepreneur. And anybody that has these words in their post is going to pop up. Excellent. So you can click on posts click on groups, group pages, and you can even add yourself to group pages and add yourself to communities. And when you get in these group pages, what you're trying to, what you're, what you're doing is in relation to what you're looking for, if you can add value in these group pages, people are going to see the value you add. You're going to add value to the community, whether it be working out. If I, if I attach myself to a um, workout group, what, what are my favorite workouts and why? Maybe I could go live in there and share those. Maybe I could do a quick three to five minute um, live about what I love about this workout or um, what I love about this workout and, and, and how I feel. If you're adding value to the community, people are gonna be drawn to you. If they're drawn to you, they are going to click on your profile. When they click on your profile, what does your storefront look like? Are you educating, empowering, and entertaining? Because if you are, they're going to see that and they're going to be drawn to you. They're going to be attracted to what you bring to the table. They're going to see you as someone that is adding value to the community. They're going to want to connect with you. So that's how you kind of build a following. You, you, you post something in one of these group pages and it goes viral, meaning people share it like crazy. All of a sudden, you have, you have a, a, a couple thousand followers you, overnight and you didn't even know it. Um, so I like to do that. You guys, I like to look for, for people who would be quality shoppers, quality builders, people who are like-minded. Um, and I like to, to, to go like, com- um, comment, which you're giving them a high five, private message them and continue the compliment. Say, Hey man, I just saw that post, um, about what you did. I think that's amazing. This is what I like about it. So Vincent, in, in, uh, in face-to-face, when you're out and about, uh, when people engage in conversation sometimes, uh, these overzealous Mel Luka marketing executives have a tendency to what we call pounce. So what would be uh, an example of pouncing on someone on Facebook? Um, <laughs> this, is, this, is, this, is, this is a good, this is actually a great question, Phil. Um, Forest feeding, Melaleuca, forest products and services down people's throats. Um, you know, I, I'm asked sometimes, you know, I, I get asked, to say, Vincent, um, you know, you, 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 you've signed a lot of, of business builders and, and, and never take away, Melaleuca is 90% shoppers, you guys. These shoppers are potentially can be business builders, but I also look for business builders, right? People who are like me. Um, and so when I have someone who says, you know, I sign a lot of shoppers, I just don't sign a lot of, of builders. Um, you know, this is one thing I tell them is, you know, um, don't force feed 
products and services down people's throats. We have videos and we have overviews that do the selling for us. Our job, Bill, is just to get people to an overview. Exactly. So when they say, how do you do it? How do you sign business builders? I want to go direct or three. I need a business builder. Well, here at the end of the day, and before I go on with this, I want to tell you guys something really important. If you feel you're better at signing shoppers versus signing business builders, the only difference is, is your confidence and posture is there signing shoppers. Yes. Right. You know, as soon as you start talking to someone about your product, you already know they're going to see the value in what you say. And they will watch a video or an overview because it's already in your head that they're going to watch the video and overview after you talk to them. You believe they need you. You believe they need these products because they will change your prospect's lives. And you're right. <laughs> yeah, that's true. You're right. But you have to have the same belief level in signing builders. And that takes time. Over 70%, I think the statistics are seven, over 70% of Americans are in debt now. Mm. People need you. If you believe you have a multi million dollar business and they need this, your posture and confidence will show that. People will be drawn to you depending on how you approach it. But if you're scared and you don't have that belief level, your prospects are going to sense that. If, I, if, I, if I'm talking to someone and I'm like, yeah, and you can actually make some money with this, and and I think that you know you could possibly make money, do you want to kind of see what that is? I, I'm going to be like, no. But if I say, oh, man, we have this we have this amazing opportunity. You know, we, we have a business that, you know, we have in the area, and I need more people like uh, I need more people like you who are a team player, who are confident, I think you'll love it. I think you're absolutely love this. Would you be at all open to making extra money? I like that when you say we need, I need people like you. Because I have to tell you a funny story because it took place in Atlanta. <laughs> tell me. At their, your backyard at, a, at the Atlanta Convention Center. Well, that's a busy convention center, and, and we were all complaining. We did not know where we were going. We couldn't find the different rooms we were supposed to go to. And they had this special entrance for guys like you, executive directors and above. And so nobody knew where it was. Well, I come walking into the convention center, and I'm t little, literally tilting forward, you know, and I got this, you know, this squint in my eyes, and I'm power walking. And and then I, I finally stopped because I thought I knew where I was. I turned around. There was a whole multitude of people following me. When I stopped, they said, oh, come on, Phil. You don't know where you're going? And I said, oh. Trying to, same, trying to find the same entrance you're trying to find. I said, why are you all following me? They said, because you look like you knew where you were going. Exactly. There's an example of posture, but it took place at the Atlantic Convention Center. They want to pick on you. Go ahead. Bill, I, I, I followed you in the airport. <laughs> really? <laughs> I didn't know that. Bill, you, you do have the posture. You do have the confidence. And, I did not know that. But if, if, Bill, you were to approach me about this business, I would have been open because your belief level's there. The only difference between us being good at signing shoppers, between being good at signing builders, is our confidence level. We here's here's the good news. We are never good at anything that we start. I guarantee you, those that are good at shoppers here, at signing shoppers, I guarantee you, if you go back in time when you first started signing Mel Luca shoppers, I guarantee you you failed. You probably fell down a couple times. Just learned a new acronym for the word fail. You want to hear it? What's that? First attempt in learning. Ooh, I like that. I'm actually write this down so I remember. <laughs> you can give me credit for it the first couple times, and you can say, this is what I've always said. I will always give you the credit for it. <laughs> always. I like that. That's actually really good. Um, you guys will become good at finding business builders if you approach it like people need you and you don't need them. It, it, it's, you got to know what you have your hands on. you got to share with passion and excitement. It's going to come out of you. And it's going to take some time. But you're going to get better as you go. That's the, whole, that's the whole cool part about this journey, you guys. And you have exceptional leadership. 
to help you. Bill, uh, his son, I mean, uh, you guys have exceptional leadership here that are going to help you, that aren't going to let you fall. They're going to be there with you all the way to the end. So, um, Phil, I think, you know, at the end of the day, people, people don't join companies. People join other people. What does that mean, right? What, what does that mean? Well, if, if people are going to say yes to building a business with you, I would like to partner with you, with Mel Luca. What they're really saying is, I want to join you. I see value in you, Phil. What they're saying without even realizing it is, um, is that by joining you in your business, partnering with you in your business, they feel as though they're going to get some sort of power by associating themselves with you. In other words, they think by partnering with you in your business, you can help them improve their current circumstances, situation. You're going to help them create a better life for themselves. They think that they can learn from you. They think that they can grow from you. They think that you can help them. Oftentimes we lose sight of this and we, 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 we talk about the product services and the business and all the money we make and we shove it down their throats. And that's not what's going to sign people. That's true, and their and their perception of the business is what they watch you do. So I always try to when I ask when I'm doing whatever it is that I'm doing, I, I ask myself two things. First of all, can this person do what I do? And if the answer is no, I'm going to kind of simplify what I'm doing. The second question is, would they want to do what I do? When I see you at the at the leadership conferences, you're always smiling. You're always positive. They're always engaging in meaningful conversation with people, or you're, you're happy. And you're, by the way, we're, we're, we're cheering you on as you make your laps around the stage. No sooner than you get an award, you're up out of your seat and getting another one. So we, we've been there, but now we're cheering you on because, you know, uh, we take turns encouraging each other in this business. But there's a, a, a principle that says that our spiritual maturity, and I know you're a believer, is built line upon line, precept upon precept. What does that mean? means you learn you apply it to your life and you grow and then you learn you apply and you grow if you do that over a long period of time six months to a year from now you're not even going to recognize yourself and do you agree that this business that we engage in makes us better people wow Phil, i've grown so much um so much over the past two years alone um i feel like a better human being more developed, more just everything, right? I, I, you're attaching yourself to other like-minded people. You, you can't help but to go up. You can't help but to change in a, in a very awesome and positive way. I agree. I agree with you. And you'll rarely rise above your level of your own personal development. That's what I love about a Christian. He's a, he's a student. I mean, he shares, he shares things with me all the time and we, you know, that's the kind of relationship we have all, all of our kids, but Christian especially is into, into that. So he said, do you guys sit together at the conferences? Are you close to each other? Look, me and Christian? Yeah, you're pretty close in seat. I, I think so. Like, yeah, we, we were the last time, um, for sure. Yeah, we're somewhere around the same way. What's Christian's uh, rank again? He's, nas he's national director. I know you're, you're well on your way there. Yeah, he's, he's sitting up, up a little bit higher than I am. But All right, no, I you're... I, I see him in sights. I see okay, him in good, good. I strive to be like you and Christian. Uh, believe me, I'm, I'm, I'm on my way. <laughs> well, Vincent, I tell you what, with what you bring uh, to the table, and, and I know because the, the, more, the more we're around you, the more we appreciate you and just the fact that you were willing to, to share. You know, it's interesting. We go to the conferences. People will talk about doing in-homes. They'll talk about their presentations. They'll talk about their approaches and product knowledge or whatever. When you ask them, what are you doing, you know, on social media, uh, all of a sudden, I don't know how English, you know? It's like they, they don't want to talk about it. So when you said, hey, I'll show you what I'm doing, I'd be glad. I mean, that's, 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 that's priceless. So a couple of questions about your success. The senior in six months, then executive director in what about a year? Yeah, I think it was a, I think it was a hit exec a year and two months in. Yeah, awesome. 
That's all. Awesome. Somewhere around that. By the way, you're going to hear, I'm going to give you a shocking statistic. You're talking about enrolling 400 people in this other program. This is amazing, but we hit executive director on 32 enrollments and 12 directors. Christian did it wow. with, he had, uh, I think he was 31 enrollments and, uh, and, and 10 directors. And Brother Dave, wow. about the same thing. And that about the same incredible. time period, right between 10 and 11 months, all three of us. I don't know why it happened that way. So when you hear those kind of numbers, you say, wow, I earned uh, enrolled hundreds in the other company. And you think, for us, 32 enrollments got us to a, a, a very comfortable six-figure income, you know? That's Isn't that amazing when you think about that. <laughs> those numbers are phenomenal, Bill. So it, it's it's... You guys are doing the things. You're doing the seven critical activities. It tells me you're leading from the front and you're in the trenches 100% with your group. There's no other way around it. You have to be in order to, and that, that gives us hope though. I mean, that inspires me. That inspires my group to know that you can get there from 30 enrollments, right? You can. You can. With quality builders right. and Back in the day, we used to use the uh, phrase "camping out." Man, if I latched onto somebody like you, we're camping out. You know, we're 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 talking every day. Your goals become mine, and we we literally, I mean, you're joined at the hip. So, I think I see what the mistake that a lot of people make when uh, you enroll somebody and you say, "Hey, man, we're climbing the mountains, we're crossing rivers, we're meeting on the beaches of the world, we're joined at the hip," and then you kind of park them because you're chasing after the comfies, right? Or you're chasing after the, the, the promotion and uh, and you, and the person is saying, hey, what happened to Vince? What happened to climbing the mountains and beaches of the world and joining the dead? I haven't heard from him. You know? So if you find that gem that says, hey, please tell me this is going to work for me. Tell me, you know, just tell me that you're going to be there for them. Forget about the comfies. Give that person the senior executive director. You can buy a store of comfies. Anyway, uh, so Vince, what what is your uh, cumulative earnings with Melvin? And that's got to be pretty impressive. Um, Four hundred and eight thousand dollars to date. Oh my goodness! And how about your largest check? Was thirty six thousand and and some change. And you know what? You know what's so cool about that? That's an awesome check, by the way. You know what's so neat about it? It's your report card for how many people you helped. And with other companies, wow. I know you've been exposed to a lot of them. And you say, yeah, I got this check, but you know what? People had to join for 499 bucks a pop, and they have to pay 100 bucks a month for a website. I don't see how people can feel good about that. You know, yeah. put your head on the pillow and I say, hey, got a $36,000 check. That means I helped a heck of a lot of people. That's uh, a heck of a lot of people. So I, I like what you said it. in the beginning about as proficient as you are in social media. And by the way, thanks for sharing the, those those, those, I call them secrets because most people will keep them secret. I also like the fact that you said, don't forsake the, the personal relationships. You know, don't, don't forsake. I mean, some, some people say, well, I, I hate to get people together and, 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 and share my, my business with them. I don't like, well, guess what? Other people love to do that. Yeah. You know, uh, I see people that are chatting at, chatting at me like crazy. No. Nope. No problem. If, if you guys want to open it for questions and answers, I wish we're going to do more of these. I hope because, gosh, I love I, I love doing this. I'm not well, like, you uh, you you are amazing. By the way, you look cool in that uh, outfit. So it's actually a Mel Luca jacket. Oh wow! Okay, is that why you have it on? Yeah. All right. Uh, we all love him. Oh boy. He's an excellent. Uh, know. And you guys are crushing as well. Nuggets, examples, stories, powerful. Thank you. Oh, that's Michaelisa. Yeah, she's she's awesome. Okay, the Thank question you. that came in for Vince: When reaching out to prospects, do you wait until they engage back with you, or do you wait until they actually comment? In other words, is there a certain point someone is ready for an approach? What is what so is the indicator? Um, I you know, I wait for the right time. I wait for. I like to build that relationship. Um. It's a little bit more difficult to build the trust on social media versus in person. I find that working on social media and then talking to people in person, Phil, I'm like, it's so much easier in person because you're face-to-face. -face. People see you. They feel you. 
you have to build that relationship a little bit stronger before diving in and, 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 and approaching. So I would say that when I like someone's post and I comment under someone's post, I give them a high five and then I go straight to a private message. I initiate the conversation. But when I initiate the conversation, I'm carrying the compliment from the post that I liked and I commented on right. it. And then I'm letting them know how much I appreciate it or how much I could relate to it. And then I ask, end it with a question. Um, for instance, if I see Bill and he's posting about his family going to Disneyland, I'm like, hey, I've always wanted to go to, like, comment, go to his, uh, go to his, and I've been watching Phil for a while. I think he's going to be, he would be an exceptional builder here. I'm going to go private message Phil and I'm going to say, hey, Phil, I saw your, your post about Disneyland. What was your favorite ride? I can't wait to go there. I'm not going after Phil, ready just to, just to come in like a vulture and snatch Phil and get him on an overview. Yeah. I want to connect with Phil first. I'm waiting for the right time. I'm waiting for Phil to express a need. I promise you that any time in a conversation, a need is going to come up, and we have yes. over 500 solutions yeah. <laughs> in our store that we're able to share with people, but also... If, if, if let's just say I'm talking to Phil and that he isn't expressing need, we're just going back and forth. I can open it up, and how I might open it up? If I think Phil's good, potentially a good a good builder, I'm gonna say, Phil, I just have to ask, what is it you do for work? Yeah. Phil's gonna tell me what he does for work, but I've already built a relationship. Phil's gonna probably ask me back what I do. If you ask me enough questions, I will. <laughs> exactly. I'm, obli I'm obligated to. Yeah. It's and Phil's going to watch and look at my Facebook post. He's going to know I'm doing something. He's going to see a product post or something. He's going to be like, hey, well, what do you do? And I'm going to be like, I'm an executive for a green manufacturing company out of Idaho. And I do two things. I teach people how to make money from home. And I show people a better way to shop. Benefit, benefit, benefit. Mm -hmm. And... I don't even jump on them after that. You let it marinate. Because I want to see if they say, well, that sounds awesome. How can I make money from home? Mm -hmm. That's when I share. Yeah. And if, if, if he doesn't express anything at that point, I'm just going to go back to talking with Phil about other things right? until it comes up an opportunity where I can open it up again. I'm not going to stop opening it up. I'm just going to wait for the right time. I'm going to be a consultant. I'm not going to be a salesperson. If that makes sense. Yeah, that is, that is, I, I, a Christian type, and he liked that response, you know, that you're, you're an executive for a, a green uh, manufacturing company. I don't know, I, I know that's, that's great. You know, uh, uh, people ask me, like we have now in our career, which is a lot longer than yours, so we have 200 personal enrollments. I say, oh my goodness, what was your favorite approach? And you know what? Uh, I break it down into two categories. The proactive approach is when I pick up the phone and call someone. Mm -hmm. The reactive approach is the one you just taught, and you taught it very well. Because if you're really sincere about helping people instead of getting people, you're going to be listening. And the elements of a sale have never changed. You find the need and you fill it. You find it by listening, not by right. talking. And then you skillfully say, you know what, Vincent, I think there's, I, I know I have something that can help you. When can we get together over coffee? And you go for the choice clothes, but I love the way you do that rather than, you know, just say, hey, I'm, I'm Mr. Melaluca and I'm expanding my business and we're a multi-billion dollar this and we have a 90. Who cares? You haven't said it. I like in your approach, you're throwing the benefit statements in there. And right. There's, and, there's, and you're smiling like you are right now. And they go, why wouldn't I go in business with this guy? You know? It, it just deep. goes back to... to, to People don't join companies, they join people. Yeah. And, and you know, if we sell them, if we just add value, it's going to sell them on us. And, and the thing I, I find is, is some teammates, it, it requires them to get out of their comfort zone. It requires them to get a little uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. But we have to share our story with people. You know, we have to share where we've been. Uh, if we listen to our prospects, like Phil said, they will tell us why they're wanting something like this business and why they're wanting to join you. And, and, you know, more than likely, um, you have a story in relation to your prospect story somewhere down the line. You, 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 
you can become very relatable. If you're relatable to your people and you have a story, there's, there's nothing more powerful than a story, Phil. And hey, how about those stories I was telling you when we were on the <laughs> oh, phone? Phil, I love them. I we was, were on I the was, phone for two hours. I, I, st- I could have stayed on five hours. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And, and if you're relatable to people, then we are human beings. And, and that's where, that's the difference between uh, signing people and not signing people. We just have to be consultants. We have to listen. I think that's a very valid point you said, listening. Hey, it was a good one from Christian. You're, you're going to love this one. And this came from Tom Braddock, the, uh, a, a school principal and a salt of the earth kind of a guy. He said, <laughs> who is your enroller and how often do you talk to them? Because <laughs> people... You know, Christian's putting, he's setting you up, right? But Tom is asking Christian that. Who's your enroller now if you talk to him? So sometimes people complain, oh, man, I had this enroller. They're not doing this for me, and I'm not doing that. If I had a good enroller, I'd be so much further along. So who's your enroller now if you talk to them? Absolutely. Um, oh, you, and, and, and is it Mikalisa? Mikalisa? Mm-hmm. Does Vincent say executive because he is an executive director? Now, I can say it as a director. I'm a director for an, for a um, green manufacturing company based out of Idaho. I'm an executive director. It all sounds really lovely, and it's the truth. Yeah. It's so, the, so the question is, Vince, we can't, you can't escape this one because the principal asked it. Who is your enroller and how often do you talk to them, and how much are they piling into your business? Who is your enroller and how often do you talk with them? Who is your enroller and how often do you talk with them? Um, I've never been asked that before. Um, that's the, is this a prospect asking this to you? Who's hey, your I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rescue it for that one, Vince. Don't even go there, okay? I think, <laughs> I think Christian set you up on that one. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, well, I guess I'm having a moment here. Um, <laughs> okay, who, who enrolled you then, Christian wants to know? Um, oh, is this a specific question to me or yeah, who enrolled not, me? Yeah, not giving up on this. Who enrolled you? Oh, I'm sorry. My, my, um, okay, you're asking me directly. I'm sorry, you guys. I read the Okay, no, no. Uh, my enroller um, is uh, my ex-girlfriend. Actually, how much support are you getting from uh, your I don't have, people? I, I, I think she's piling into your business. I have zero support. And how many people are, is she piling into your business? Not Zero. And how much encouragement strategy does she conduct with you? None. Okay, so if it's going to be, it's up to me, right? But you know what the cool part is, you guys? Here's the cool part. You go to an event, and you get to meet people like Phil and Christian. You get to meet people like them who become like family to you. You get to collaborate with these other leaders, and you get this, you get other people's support. But here's, here's, here's the thing, you guys. Here's, here's the cool part. No look at gives us all the tools. It's all in the back office. Yeah. And all we have to do is put our business to work. Because at the end of the day, what's going to happen if you don't have a support team? All you got to do is put your foot to the floor and, and, and talk to people. Add people. Share your passion. You guys can do this. And, and heck, this is what we didn't have in other companies. We never had a a customer service line. We didn't have a business development line. I don't call it business development and ask them anything. And they're the best. Mm-hmm. You guys have all the, the, the support. But if you didn't have it, you're going to get support. You're going to have it somewhere. And if people don't believe in you, it's okay. You know what I've done? I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you, Phil, what I did. When I've had zero support, when I thought everybody was against me, not friends, family, neighbors, coworkers who thought I couldn't do something, I used it as fuel. I, love I used that. it as fuel. I love that. To push me through. I, my reason why it was so strong, and it had to do with my family, my reason why it was so strong that it would have taken an act of God to stop me. Nobody could tell me I couldn't do it. And what I did was I took home. I, I got, I mean, imagine Phil working with construction workers and them just finding out you're doing something and they just, and they just, they beat on you. Oh, yeah. They beat on you. I took that home with me, and what I did was I, I took it and I said, they're trying to stop me from retiring my dad who has cancer. They're trying to stop me from, from, from helping my mom with her music career that she's, she's, she's put her, her blood, sweat, and tears in since I was a kid. I'm going to show them. I'm going to go. I'm going to spend. 
I may have to work 16 hours today, but I'm going to get on Facebook. I have nothing else. I am going to, I'm going to figure this out. I'm going to reach out to enough people and somebody say yes. My reason why was so big that you could not stop me and I did it. And I, and I used what they did as fuel to motivate me versus drag me down and stop me and quit. And you guys could do the same thing. I'm telling you right now. Yeah. You can do the same thing. If I could do it, you can do it. I started with 300 friends on Facebook. I had zero followers and nobody, nobody joined me that I knew. Nobody. Wow. That you knew. But I, I, I needed to have that negativity to drive me because I wanted to show people, you can't stop me. You may block me. You may mock me. You may put me down. But one thing you can't do is stop me. I'm going to drive this bad boy into oblivion now. <laughs> and, 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 and I told my, my, I told the railroad, I'm going to retire in two years. And because they were so hard on me, I did it in 19 months. Wow. And I, I got never, out of there. You never looked back and the other guys are still stuck. You know what I learned from it, Phil? At first they mock you and then they follow you. Mm. They're going to watch you guys. Yeah. At first they're going to be negative. You got to show them you're going to do it. And let me tell you something. After a while they go, hey, hey you know, uh, what's going on with that business yeah. you got? And then so you wouldn't believe when I, you know, I live in it. I had a lot of Italians in our, in our hometown of Vianna. Man, they had a field day when I when I told them I'm going to do this business alongside of my sign company. It's called Melaleuca. Man, they were calling it Mama Luca Metamuso Melanoma. Hey, good luck with that one, Phil. You know, and uh, yeah, let me know how that one goes. And it, it was it was almost like a joke. And and they they even told me it was going to fail. And just like you, that provided fuel for me. That uh, you know, I mean, I, I I would go do anything. I'd work day and night just to prove them wrong. And I'm glad I did. And yeah, Vincent, we can uh, we can keep you on all night. You are absolutely amazing, and I know these folks are going to be pleading for you to come back. So uh, I would love to. I would. It would be an up. honor, really. I mean that. Thank, thank you so much. Um, in in your in your last parting words of encouragement, um, what can you say to people that are feel like they're stuck and they just you know can't get to the next level? What would you say to them? You know when I when when I'm stuck. Life hits us with curveballs, and unfortunately, it uh, it puts us in a back seat sometimes. And there was a man that once told me, he says, Vincent, you got to get back in the driver's seat, and you just got to put your foot to the floor. How long you stay in the back seat, it's up to us. It's up to us. Sure. If I'm if I'm feeling a certain way, I'm a human being. I'm not always as positive. I go through life just like everybody else. I go through through frustrations and. And, and sadness and being upset. But let me tell you guys what I what I do. I'm gonna tell you. Sometimes I get in a rut and I'm feeling a certain way. You know where I go? I go to YouTube. You know what I type in? I go to the search on YouTube and I type in frustration, personal development, um, how to not be upset, personal mm -hmm. development. Um, I'm sad. How do I get out of a rut? personal development and, and a plethora of videos come up. I mm -hmm. find something with a lot of views and I play it for 10 to 20 minutes a day. Mm -hmm. It's amazing when you hear something positive, when you're in that bad mindset, it's amazing how it, it just turns. Oh yeah. That's why personal development is so, so, so good. Mm -hmm. You guys start doing that today. You'll get out of your own way and, and you'll put your businesses back to work. So I wish you guys all the best. Great I, I'll advice. be here. And Great I can't advice. Hey, so Vince, you're 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 waiting for the invitation. It's an open invitation. Okay, I'm gonna send you. I'm gonna send you my address. As a matter of fact, next week we're gonna have a party at, at our house. I'm gonna play, if you see the keyboard behind me, I play Christmas songs. See that? If you can sing a little bit, come on over next Friday night. Uh, I'm, I'm, starting I'm, at five o'clock. I always told people if I can take my shower onto American Idol on the stage, I'd probably win it. But other than that, <laughs> all right. Hey, Vince. Thank you, thank we'll you, thank connect. you. We'll connect after this for sure. I'm, I'm looking okay. forward to it. All right. Thank you so much. Have a good night, everyone. Thank you for joining. We have a really nice group tonight. And uh, just everybody, just wave good night uh, to Vincent. Vincent, thank you, brother. Thanks we again, y'all. All right. Good night, everyone.